East Fed Archives has adult language and violence and is not suitable for children. Listener discretion is advised. East Fed Archives is a creative typo entertainment production. If you enjoy this show, we invite you to support us on Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash creative typo. All levels of membership include ad-free listening, and our binge tier includes access to this complete season. Thank you for listening. Chapter 12 Cricket What sentient would you like to hear about next? What can you tell me about... me? Besides the hunter, anomalies are the entities that we know the least about. There is a possibility that you know more than the chroniclers at this point. Hastings, I know very little about what anomalies are, except dangerous. Anything you might have left out before could help me understand how to control this ISFET stuff. One of the first things the chroniclers note is that anomalies cannot control ISFET. It is chaos. We believe it simply happens around you. But we know that isn't entirely true. I can shift the lines. That is something I did not know prior to September and I meeting you. If other, more experienced chroniclers did know, you could do that. It was redacted from the archives. Why would anyone redact or remove information from the chronicler archives? I thought you said that chroniclers don't have selfish ambitions for power or control or anything like that. And they do not. While I do have theories, I do not know why it would have been redacted from the archives or if it was. Now, let's get back to the topic of anomalies. Okay. There are 81 anomalies born every year. Why 81? I do not know. That doesn't seem like chaos to me. Nor to me. Nonetheless, anomalies are considered to have ties to chaos. We call this power the Isfet. At an early age, an anomaly will unlock their abilities, and their power will naturally grow over time. We call the moment where an anomaly first accesses their Isfet the tap. The tap typically occurs in their late teens or early twenties. Before the tap, are anomalies humans? No. You were always an anomaly. There is no documented way to prevent the tap, so the anomaly is always an anomaly. Though they are treated as humans by chroniclers until the tap occurs. Oh. Anomalies will continue to grow in their power until an ISFET event eventually kills them. Such an event will typically result in a large loss of human and hidden life as well. It is speculated that an anomaly who lives to the age of 30 may have enough power to cause a cataclysmic event. That being said, different anomalies appear to have different levels of power, some much stronger than others. Stronger anomalies may be able to initiate cataclysmic events at a younger age. When you say stronger, you mean much more deadly. Mm, I mean stronger, but there is a correlation between strength of Isfet and deadliness. And there's no way to stop these events from happening. There is a successful method. Elimination of the anomaly. Right. Elimination. Ugh. You do not like that. So, what about the Harbingers? Again, this was something I was not aware of before my encounter with you. If the Contra are correct, you could have up to four Harbingers. Marcus appears to be your first. In theory... Harbingers are able to identify upcoming ISFET events connected to their specific anomaly. We're still figuring out how that works exactly. In the archives, it is noted that anomalies can see blue lines that trace back to impacts of ISFET. Anomalies having the ability to see different colors is information that I also lacked before meeting you. And the dreams? The dreams appear to be visions back into the lives of previous anomalies. Your ancestors, in a manner of speaking. But what do they mean? 
I am sorry, Emily. I do not know, and I don't have enough data to formulate an appropriate hypothesis. I am doing my best to learn from you and Marcus, but it will take time. And what if we don't have time? All right. Who's next on the list of the hidden? Emily dreamt the same nightmares she'd been having for months. While this nightmare is not one of her vision dreams, it was born of one such. Hastings stood before her and asked if her name was Susan. Emily wordlessly nodded her head and the fear sank in. September pulled a large pistol from under his coat, aimed the weapon at Emily, and pulled the trigger. Emily woke with a gasp. <gasps> it took only a moment for her to regain her bearings. It was midday. She was with Marcus in Montana. Hastings in September had already left for Libya. She was safe, she hoped. Marcus entered her room with a concerned expression on his face. Emily had left her door propped open and Marcus had likely heard her gasp. Hey, you okay? Yeah, just a bad dream. I didn't realize you were trying to sleep. Were you hoping to have another vision? No, I didn't even mean to fall asleep. I was reading a book and it just kind of happened. Ah. Was it a vision? No, Marcus. Just a bad dream. I'm sorry. You just... You look really pale. I didn't mean to... No, you're fine. It's not you. It's... I don't know. Everything? I get it. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's stressful. Thanks. It has been a while since I've had a vision dream, hasn't it? A few weeks for you. Longer for me. Maybe I'm finished having them. God, I hope not. I think we could learn a lot more about ourselves if you keep having them. Yeah, I think so too. It would be nice if I could be in all the visions, and not just random ones. So, I've been thinking about that. Oh? Yeah. The visions you're in all have a harbinger for the anomaly. The ones you've missed don't. You think I can only get in if there's a harbinger from the past there as well? So far, that tracks. So, was the nightmare about Harp and the Contra? No. Why? I have nightmares about them sometimes. Sometimes it's just Harp in the cabin. Other times it's faceless Contra agents finding us and... They're not going to find us here. How can you be so sure? September and Hastings are hundreds of years old. I'd like to imagine that they know how to hide from the world when they want to. I guess so. Do you think the Contra will send other agents to find us? Maybe. Probably. I've been looking into them online. I think I've found a few shell companies that they use... And several of them have very high-profile financial backers. But that's about all I've found so far. Turns out investigating secret organizations is not something I'm very good at. It seems like it would be a practiced skill. I'm sure you'll do better on your next secret organization deep dive. <laughs> I think I'm okay with just the one. Thank you. Seriously, though, you think they'll send someone? Yeah, probably. Hastings and September all but guarantee it. And they just left. Yep. And for some reason, you don't seem too concerned with their going. <sighs> so, you know that nightmare I just had? The one not about Contra. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a vision dream, but it did come from one. Back before we left Chicago, I had a vision dream, and... I haven't decided what I want to do about it yet. What was it about? It was about September and Hastings. They found the anomaly host I was in. Then they killed her. Jesus. Her name was Susan. Fucking Christ, why didn't you tell me? I've never had a good time to tell you. They're 
always with us or something is always going on. This is the first time they've really left us on our own. Do you think that we can trust them? To some degree. But I think we need to be careful. The only people we can truly trust right now is each other. Well, that's depressing. No offense. Yeah, Yeah, none taken. And on that note, I'm going to go for a run. A run? Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah, I'll be fine. I haven't had any visions and you aren't seeing any lines. Right? No, no lines, but- Then we are good. I need some fresh air. There's some coffee in the kitchen if you want some. I made a fresh pot about an hour ago. All right. Enjoy your run, Marcus. Emily continued to lay in her bed, scrolling through social media accounts on her smartphone. A cup of coffee sounded appealing, but the nightmare still haunted her, and she needed time to distract herself. For Emily, few things were more distracting than the cesspool that was social media. She scrolled through a few different feeds looking for anything interesting before finally giving up. She searched through Sam's page next, stopping to admire the recent photos of Tribble, her cat that Sam was currently pet-watching. She made sure not to like or comment on any of the photos. She needed to stay invisible, for now. From there, she continued on to Amber's page, and then on to Extended Family. When she finally decided to give her eyes a rest and roll out of bed, Emily slid her smartphone into her back pocket and made her way to the kitchen. As she poured her cup of coffee, she heard a voice speak from the other side of the room. Hey, Emily. What's happening? Holy shit. Who's there? Where, where are you? Whoa, 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 Where the whoa, fuck Emily, are Emily, you? Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. It's just me. It's just Cricket. Who the fuck is Cricket? And why can't I see you? It's me, Cricket. You know me. No, I do not know any Crickets. Yes, And you... tell me why I can't see you. Oh, shit. Is this the first time? What? I don't- Fuck, it is the first time. Wow. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, hold on. I can explain everything. Just, just give me, give me a second to gather my thoughts. No, tell me right now. Who are you and where exactly you are? All right, damn. Okay, my name is Logan. Uh, Logan Spanner. You call me Cricket, though. And I'm an anomaly, like you. Wait, really? Yep, I'm an anomaly. Oh, this is so great. I knew this day would come, but I didn't realize- If you're an anomaly, then where are you? Why can't I see you? Oh, right, okay. Um, where to start? Uh, oh, I know. Emily, do you know how sometimes you have dreams about other anomalies in the past? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm doing right now. You are my past. Or you're in the past for me. I'm bad with the phrasing for the time stuff. But I'm asleep right now, and I'm talking to you in my vision. Prove it. Uh, how do you want me to do that? Tell me something that's going to happen in the future. Well, this is awkward. You specifically told me never to tell you anything about the future. Bullshit. No, seriously, that's your rule. I said I didn't see how it would matter, but you were adamant. I have never spoken to you before, and I definitely did not say that. Well, that's the thing. This is your first time talking to me, but it's not my first time talking to you. What do you mean? Think about it. Emily, are your dreams in chronological order, or do you dream random events from random times? Oh, I see. When I met you in my past, your future... You told me not to tell you stuff about the future, because we weren't sure how this works. I guess that makes sense. Alright, fine. Let's say you're right. Logan, is it? Ugh, that's weird now. You said your name is Logan, right? Yeah, but you started calling me Cricket at some point. It was annoying at first, but I've kind of gotten used to it. It's weird to hear you call me Logan. Like I'm in trouble. Sure. Cricket. How are you doing this in your dream? I've 
had several dreams and I've never been able to communicate with others. Bizarre, I know. Uh, I'm not positive how it works, but it seems to only work for me. And only with you. I haven't been able to find any other anomalies that can talk to people in the past. And so far, you're the only person that I seem to be able to visit more than once. You know other anomalies? Yep, a couple. This is great. I have so many questions about how to use my powers. Where to start? <laughs> oh my god, this just keeps getting better. What now? You have questions about how to use your powers. Emily, you're the one teaching me how to use mine. What? No, I I know nothing about Isbet. You know more than I do. Uh, in fact, I, I was hoping to learn more about the different colors of Isfet. You'd said that blue lines were for humans, and sometimes inanimate objects? More like uh, Isfet impact points. Red lines are for animals, pink for plants, and maroon for shifters. I need to get the rest of the colors from you. What? No, wait. This... this can't be right. I, I need a second. Emily, I'm really sorry, and I wish that I could say that we could pick this conversation up later, after you've had time to process everything, but every time I wake up from one of these dreams, there's a chance that I'll never see you again. I need to get as much information as possible from each dream. But I... I'm looking for information, just like you. You're hoping that September and Hastings can help you the same way that I'm hoping you can help me. So please, help me before this dream ends. <sighs> okay. Okay, so what other colors do you know? I only know that chroniclers are green and guides are orange. In fact, I didn't know the shifters are maroon. I assume that means I meet one or dream about one? Fuck! I'm sorry. I fucked that up. I'm not supposed to give you information about the future. I'm sure it's okay. Now, future Emily would be super fucking annoyed with me that I wasn't more careful. She seems fun. Wait. If... You're an anomaly, then why do you need me to tell you the colors? Can't you see them? I can see the blue lines. All anomalies can see the blue lines. You're the only person I know that can see the different colors. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I'm the only one that can see the other colors. Yep. You and I are anomalies among anomalies. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I haven't met any other anomalies, so there could be others like us. How many do you know? So far, I've only met three others from my Ennead. Ennead? Yeah, uh, anomalies have groups of nine now. We call ourselves Enneads. We've only collected four so far for mine, but I've talked with the other three extensively, and none of them can do what I can do. Or what you can do. Cricket, how far in the future are you? What year is it for you right now? Oh, right. It's 2024. So that means I'm, uh... 108 years later? Damn. So, last time we talked, you were telling me about absorption? Absorption? What's absorption? Ugh, come on. How far back are we for you? Look, it's not like you're helping me out here. I already told you that I don't know anything. Fine. Whatever. I guess we can just talk about your day or something. Uh, how's your coffee? It's fine. Cricket, not to say that I'm not thoroughly enjoying this conversation with my little imaginary friend, but how long are you supposed to be hanging around in my head? Until the dream ends. Dreams are finicky that way. Actually, that brings up another question. How are you in my head when there isn't an Isfet event happening? Every time I've had a dream... There's an Isfet event happening around the anomaly I'm dreaming about, or the anomaly is about to get killed. I don't know. I didn't know that was the case, actually. I've had plenty of dreams where the anomaly is just doing random stuff, and there aren't explosions or anything. Strange. Oh, hey! Is that Marcus? Where? Through the window, coming towards the house. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was just out for a run. I really liked Marcus. Liked? Yeah, he was a solid harbinger. Was? Harbingers are so much harder to find now. None of the anomalies in my Ennead have one. 
I really hope I can find my own Harbinger one day. Why is it harder to find them? Cricket, why is it harder to find them? Harder to find what? Not you, Marcus. I was... Emily? Are you okay? Yeah. He's gone. Who's gone? Marcus, well, it seems I have something new to add to the book of strange things that keep happening to me. Hastings and September deboarded their plane and made their way through the airport. While the international flight was taxing, neither of the two would voice complaints. During their travels, the duo had sailed across the Atlantic in an incredibly uncomfortable ship. After such a horrid seafaring experience, a long-distance flight was a welcomed means of travel. The two hailed a cab and shortly thereafter were dropped off in the city. After retrieving their packs from the trunk of the vehicle, the two began to walk down the busy street. It is nice to be back in warm weather, wouldn't you say, September? Yeah, I would agree. November in Montana is slightly less comfortable than November in Libya. I am excited to get to the archives. It is nice to be back. Probably a little more nice for you than me. Why do you say that? Hastings. You have a beautiful apartment all to yourself in the archives. You have your own assigned space as well. (laughs) No, Hastings. I have a bunk room shared with three others in a barracks occupied by over 200 other guides. That hardly classifies as my own space. September. The likelihood of any of your three roommates being there at the same time as you is pretty low. They're likely all out with their partners performing investigations. That's not the point, Hastings. It was your decision to come here. I know, I know. Let's just get what we came here for and continue on. I'm more than a little concerned that we will not be able to gain access to the restricted archives. We will figure something out when we get inside. We need to see what has been redacted. If Chronicler Dean has redacted information regarding anomalies, it is for the good of all Chroniclers. If he thought it beneficial, he would tell us. I think we've earned the privilege to determine that for ourselves. Have we? There is no reason to distrust Chronicler Dean. If he believes it best, we should respect his decision. Need I remind you that Chroniclers cannot lie and do not hold the same self-motivated ambition as the other sentients? No, you need not remind me. Fantastic. Then we are in agreement. No, Hastings, we are not. And we've been through this. How likely is Chronicler Dean to give us access to any secret archives? Not likely. And how likely is it that there are secret archives? Very likely. And if Chronicler Dean has come to the conclusion that this information should be kept quiet for security reasons, how likely is it that you would agree with this assessment after reviewing the contents as well? Again, very likely. Then it won't do any harm for us to see what's in the archives. You sometimes underestimate how much harm the two of us continue to cause. I'm ignoring that. We stick to the plan. We go in and report as normal. You can begin your debrief, and I will see what I can learn regarding any restricted areas. Okay, September. I will defer to you as my guide. Though I do not like this path. I know you don't, and thank you for trusting me. At the risk of annoying you, I am going to change the subject. To what? The two humans that have been following us since we left the airport. Over your left shoulder. One has a green polo shirt and the other has a floral button-up. Contra? Seems like. They weren't on the plane, which means we picked them up at the airport. So, they're either specifically looking for us, or they know the Chroniclers have roots in Libya. Either option is not appealing. There's a hotel up around this corner. Let's go in and book a room. Then we can leave through the southeast exit. 
We need to lose them before we go to the archives. Emily Swanson is voiced by Tisha Zhang. Marcus Baker is voiced by Nico Rodriguez. Hastings is voiced by Adam Culbertson. September is voiced by Richard Collins. Cricket is voiced by Josh Allen. And narrated by Michael Cole. Eastbet Archives was written by Nico Rodriguez in collaboration with Tisha Zhang. Eastbet Archives is a creative typo entertainment production. Find out more about our show at www.creativetypo.com. A very special thank you to our executive producers from Patreon, Nick Mead and Patrick T. Arsenal.